Hi, welcome back. Um, in this video I thought I would explore um, some de decorations. I did some for Christmas and I'll show you the stills of those. Some of those are actually based on designs I'd seen on Pinterest. So if they are a design that you created, um, a lot of the images I found on Pinterest unfortunately did not have the designer's name. So if, any, if anybody wants to give me some accreditation I'll happily add it to the video of those lovely photographs um, but they were the felt images that I created were based on the Pinterest designs. Um, in a way this is similar I'm actually des um, doing an Easter egg um, decoration this is also based loosely on some of the Pinterest images I've looked at. Um, I say loosely I'm using my die cutting machine to cut the flowers. Now I've already cut out, worked out the size of my egg that I'd like it to be and I've discovered that I've got really quite a nice uh, die cut set of die cuts I've bought from the works. Anybody who think I was actually um, promoting the works, I, um, I've got no connection to the works apart from my daughter does work there um, and so I do go in there to pick her up but I am not being paid to advertise at all. I just like their products. so. I've got um, a flower die that comes with the centre, which actually looks quite um, daffodil-like. So I thought it would be quite nice to have a daffodil in the centre. Um, one of the other die cuts, again from the from the works, is these little leaves. It came in a whole collection of leaves and flowers. I'm not sure if it was the same packet now because I've separated the packets, but I'm hoping that I can actually do a design of that sort with a daffodil in the centre and just some general foliage. Obviously not daffodil foliage, but foliage all the, all the, all the same. Right, so let's crack on. So I've selected my die cuts I want to use. I've, select, I've created the pattern I'm going to use. I've got my little mini die cutting machine. Um, I'll let you guess where I got that from. <laughs> it's the same shop. And it's a little tiny little thing. I don't do much die cutting. I don't need a huge thing. But um, this is perfectly fine for me. Though I am now getting to the point where I'm thinking I might need to invest in something a little bit bigger. But for now, that does for my little projects. Um, I've got this lovely... Um, what do you call it? Eggshell blue. <laughs> for the shell, I've got the um, centre orange for the flower. I've got bright yellow. And I've got a green. I, I did wonder whether to do like the white version as well. I've got some white. I thought that looked quite nice. Um, so I might try both versions. We'll see. So first things first, let me move my fabric out of the way. Get the die cutting machine on the table. Right, this little machine comes with two little plates. It's quite simple. Now people, there's some discussion as to whether you put your die on first and put the fabric on top or whether you put your fabric on first and put your die on top. Um, I don't really think it makes any difference. But I'm sure somebody out there will tell me it does. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut off a piece of the yellow fabric. Hopefully not too big for my machine. I'm going to place my die on that. Place the top plate on the top. Now depending on what dying cut machine you've got it might tell you to use shimmies, it might tell you to, I don't know, to do all sorts of things and sometimes only certain dies will cut but I have discovered that these do cut felt. Um, I'm going through mm, I don't know, numerous times. Um, what I tend to do I lift it up and then I have a look and if I can see the cutting blade through then I know it's made it. See if it has, and you can see I can gently pop that out, and it has cut it beautifully. So let me just lay it on the fabric. That's going to look gorgeous. Right for the orange center. Let me pop that on. Pop the die on. I think that's not quite big enough, so I'll have to use this piece. Yeah, I think for me I prefer to put the die on top because I can see 
exactly where I'm positioning it and I can also see if it moves when I put the top plate on there has been occasions when it has shifted as I put the plate on two three uh, one more for luck see if it has cut it has it's cut beautifully so I'm pleased with that let's have a look see let's just see how it builds my pattern up. You can see I've got mm, a little like a daffodil. I'm not sure if that isn't too, what's the word I'm looking for, spiky. I'm not sure if I've got a, a more discreet centre. Let's be looking in another kit and see. I have got this one but I don't know if that might be too big. If it is too big, it doesn't matter. I can use this cut out for another project, so it won't be a wasted cut. Ah, oh, a pretty little shape. Let's have a look, see if that looks any better. Now that looks too big. That, actually that would look lovely in the bigger flower there is I do have a bigger flower so I might keep that on for the bigger flower I'll keep that on for that flower okay so we've got that <clears throat> I've got some little bits of green for the leaves Quite like these because they come with a left and a right, not um, all die cuts come with a left and a right. I don't know why I'm fiddling around so much, I'm sure I could. That's it. Top shim. One. Two. Great. Now some of them you have to be really careful because they are so delicate but once you've got them on to the base fabric and stitched on they're fine. <clears throat> Right, so that's me using my cutting machine. Right, okay, I've got my egg pattern. I'm placing it onto my fabric. So I'm just going to pin that through. Now, I'm mumming and ahhing whether to do pink and sheer edge. You could do a pink and sheer edge. However, I think I'm going to stick to a regular sewing edge. So I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut it out. I'm cutting them out at the same time because then I know when I put them together later they will fit together as long as I make sure... Now here's a question for you, how many of you when you cut with scissors move a cut with your tongue hanging out or you move your jaw as if you're cutting with your jaw? I know I certainly do. Right, okay, so I've got my back and I've got my front. Now I'm not entirely sure whether to decorate the back separately. I think I will actually. I think I might explore some more of my... That looks really rather nice. Quite chuffed with that. I think I might move it to one side and then have the flowers petals <coughs> or the leaves I should say coming from the side like that that looks quite nice right. 
and that's how I look. I don't want it too close to the edge because I'm going to probably blanket stitch around the edge. And I probably only need a bead holding the center and then some little running stitch on each of the leaves. And I think that'll be enough. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is come up with a design for the back. So move these out of the way. I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have a strip, a strip of white. I think I might have, I quite like the pink and sheer edge actually, that's quite nice isn't it? A pink and sheer edge, some white, and perhaps even a strip of orange. That might be quite nice. Now the strip of orange, what I could do is get my cutting machine back and again from the same company that I keep mentioning over and over again um, they had some they have lovely borders and I think I might use one of their borders there it is a lovely border and I think I might just pop that on there Could use rickrack. <clears throat> There's some beautiful rickracks, lace. Um, it depends whether you want to stick to felt. <clears throat> Let's see if that's done it. I think that has. Oh, and there we have. A little to date decorative strip that I could put on to my felt, or do I actually prefer the scallops? <laughs> I quite like the scallop, it's left. That's the thing about this, you can put it through again, and you could end up. Two of these, and what would normally be waste, actually be quite a pretty scallop. Which way does it go that way? Oh, I haven't left myself much of a scallop, <laughs> but you could see how that might, if that was a little bit wider, I think that's a little bit too delicate, it might sew on, we'll see. I do, I do like that, that is rather pretty. Put that there, put a bit that side. Pinkin shears. <clears throat> hmm. Could go there. Oh, I could. Don't know if I like that. No, I might take that one off. Actually, it's too pale. That's better. Shows up better. Mm, possibly. Actually, perhaps that does look quite nice. On there. Quite like that. And then perhaps the dark green as a strip. Let's have a look, see. Got the dark green here. Hmm. 
Well, it's not straight, but I can just... Actually, I might do that on that edge. That's what I'll do. I'll just straighten that up. Move those out of the way. I can use those for another one later. <clears throat> a lot of this is playing around and I do find that um, you can take your original inspiration from somewhere like Pinterest or even other textile artists on YouTube and they share their beautiful work and then you take it the way you want to take it to take it a little bit different depending on what materials and resources you've got the colours you've got Whenever I teach textile workshops, I'm always fascinated by the fact I can give every single lady or even gentleman the same kit, and yet they could always, always end up with something completely different from each person next to them, even if they're following the instructions of the course. People, without realising it, give it their own little tweak one more lovely that should be done okay not only have I got that as a nice little bit of trim for something else I've also managed to out. I think what, one of the things I quite like with the, using the felt doing this is the fact that it doesn't get caught in your dies, unlike paper, <laughs> to get the pokey tool out. Oh, that's really quite pretty. Let's just see how that looks now. Pop that on there like that. Does that fit okay? Or do I need to trim that? Oh, I need to trim that down now. reminds me, those of you who are that generation, it just does remind me a little bit of fuzzy felts. I think because of the sticky nature of felt, it does sort of stay in position quite nicely when you try and sew it. Oh, how pretty is that? And that could be the back. And that can be the front. Like that. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now zoom in a little bit. She says. And I'm going to show you some stitching. Okay. Now, oh, I want to zoom back out. I've just zoomed in. I've got to zoom back out again. Um, this here is a tub. Of, I don't know if you can see of my embroidery yarns. This is, I've just grabbed the green and the red, and you can you, un, you unclip them. You clip them where you, the ones the layer you want. Now the, <laughs> these, believe it or not, were from Aldi a couple of years ago when they did the. Fridge storage, that's what they called them, it's fridge storage, and they come in different depths, but they are, I find they're perfect, especially when you've got quantities of embroidery thread. They're perfect size to keep your skeins pretty much nice and neat. Mind you, they're not perfectly neat. I used to have these, but it gets to the point where they're, I don't know, fiddly to keep winding them up. So I've kept to the original my skeins together so that's the yellow and then I can just unclip it and there's my green um, not in the best of models it could I do need to resort through again but if you're looking for bread storage and Aldi have them in unfortunately they didn't always stock 
um, because they're one of their star buy things that they have once in a blue moon. Anyway, there's lots of storage items out there, so I'm sure you'll find something suitable. I'm going to use that. And I might use a lighter green thread to create veins on the leaves. Let me just see what colour takes my eye. <clears throat> now when it comes to needles I'm one of these people that I tend to choose the finest I can get away with but still with an eye that I can actually see through I think what I'll do I think I'm going to start off with an actual beading needle should I just put no I won't bead I'll do a French knot that's what I'll do so I'm going to do a French knot through the centre. So I need it, need much thread. And that's just enough to do a French knot. I'll put a knot on the back. Right, okie dokie. So that's where I want the flower. I'm just going to come up the middle, like that, place it down, wrap it, one, two, three, oh dear, yeah. oh no, let's do a fourth one, and then down again, and I think that will be enough. I'm tempted, I'm actually tempted to put some stitching in the petals. I'm going to do one, and if I don't have the look of it, I'll undo it. Um, I did do a couple of stitches, and I quite liked it, so I'm going to carry on doing those stitches. I probably should have done those before I put the centre on. As I say, you can't always be sure what you want to create until you create it. At the moment, you're just following along with me playing. Move on to the next one. I'll do the other ones off camera. I think you've got the idea now what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to stitch the little tiny leaves on and I'm going to go with this one. Now I was sewing with three strands just then. Um, I think I will just sew with a single strand because it is so fine, these lovely leaves. Now, the knack with these is to get it to look like it's growing from underneath, so I'm just going to use my needle just to tuck it back under the petal. And it is, they are so fragile. I'm just going to catch over it as if I'm couching. Right, so I've couched that on. I'll do one more stitch to couch that in under there. I'm going to couch the stem a bit more. I'm just going from one side to the other <coughs> just to hold it on. And then I'm just going to I don't know if you can see just going to do a single stitch 
all the way up. Where would I like it to go? Like that. Now on this one I think it's going to need more than one stitch. I think it could do with three. So I'm putting one there. Could do a bit of a back stitch. Like that. And then this just needs one stitch at the bottom. Oops. And down. You can see that. And I'll just repeat on the other leaf. I'll do that off camera and come back and show you. The other side I've actually started and I've start, I've done some French knots and I'm just working my way along and then I'm going to do some decorative stitching there just to extend the design. So I'm just coming up, just to, if you haven't done a French knot before, you come up. I like to lay it on my surface and then hold it in my right hand. If you're left hand you have to do it opposite and then I just wrap the needle. One, two, three, four. And then I go down, not letting go of the thread. And then as soon as I'm in place, if I need to tighten it up, I can. I don't need to tighten it. Don't tighten it too much because otherwise the head of your needle won't go through. And then you just pull it through. And that's how you do a French knot. One more. So you come up, pull your needle up, place it on the table, grab your thread in one hand or your needle. You're up near the base, one, two, three. Pop your needle back into the fabric. You need to tighten up. You just hold that thread and just tighten it. I say not too tight because the head of the needle needs to go through. And then you pull it up. I've just got two more to do. And I'm doing French knots, but you know, beads would have been quite nice. And the last one, I think what I'll do, I'll cut that end off because it's just going to keep getting in my way. Right now the stitch I was doing here, I won't do it this close, it's too close to the edge, I'm going to come in one and I'm going to start there. Whoop. I'm going to do a longish stitch and then just two shorter stitches. Ah. Move on to the next one and repeat. And as long as I try and keep the length the same, I'm actually just eyeballing it. You could get a ruler and mark them all on if you wanted them all to be absolutely spot on, even.
and low on thread. How far can I get this to make it last? Can I let it last? Okay, we'll do the big one. It won't do the small ones. I've just run out of thread. I might put one back on the end here as well, actually. So, you can see how that builds up. I will bring it back when I've finished. Okay, I've finished the embroidery now on both sides of the egg. I mean, there's nothing stopping you having the same design on both sides. I'm now going to put them wrong sides together and I'm going to blanket stitch round. Um, and I think I'm going to use a colour that almost matches so it doesn't detract from it's not a bad colour. It doesn't detract from the design in front. I did think about doing it in yellow but I did feel it would detract, so I'm going to go for a colour that almost matches. Right, I'm going to go for three strands, and I'm just going to thread that up. Now, people, as uh, I tend to keep them together, though some people say they lie better and flatter if you take them all apart. Right, I'm going to allow for the hang on the top there, tuck that in out of the way. Now I've gone as close to the edge as I dare I'm going to do blanket stitch so I'm going to come down wrap and come up so I'm going to come in wrap and then pull up I'm going to get it as even as possible. Every now and again you do need to check the other side because <clears throat> being felt the thickness and you can go at a strange angle on the other side. So it's always worth poking in, checking the other side straight and then pulling up. I come to the design. I keep going. But I try keep my distance the same. And then catching in, especially this bit here, the edge of the felt as I go. Right, got my thread going forward, so right back in. Out of the way. Oh, I keep going all the way around. Off a little bit just there. I'll come back when I've finished. Right, I've gone from there and I've stitched all the way around to this point just so I've got enough room to put my wadding in. I'm just going to get a little bit of wadding. What I did do with some of the other ones, the Christmas decorations, I actually did use up quite a lot of my old trimmings from the cotton batting when I make quilts um, that's a good way of using up yes scrapped scrap cotton batting but now I'm having to use up a spare bit of wadding or polyester filling that I've got and you can see 
all I've got to do now is sew up here. Just do the last stitch and then just hook in to where I started. Which is just there. And then do a little loop knot. So there's a loop there. Pull it up nice and tight. Might do that one more time. Oh, no, the loop's disappeared. It wasn't quick enough. There's a the loop. Through the loop. And then I'm just going to go back inside and then hide my tail end inside. Now you're probably thinking, oh, well, Claire, you could use that as a hangy bit. I could, but I'm going to make a I'll show you how I do my hangy bits. So that is how it looks. It's just okay. What I've done now. This is um, my ironing board. My a lot of people have these nice wool ones, but I chose to have a, just a piece of wood from the bottom, bottom of an old drawer actually, and then I've wrapped some old, really old-fashioned linen. Um, cloths that, uh, that have been left in my nana's old kitchen. Um, the reason why they're linen is because they will take quite an intensive heat so it doesn't matter. I mean it has got a bit grubby from all the bonder web but at least this is getting grubby and not my actual lining board but it's a dual purpose really because I can pin this on here and that allows me to use my bodkin to get underneath some of the last stitches just there. And I've, what I've done is I've actually got, they're six stranded and I've got an orange, I've got the blue and I've got the yellow. And I'm just going to poke that through like that and then I'm going to evenly space them. What I can do is I can tie a knot here. And then because I've got three colours, you've got to have three colours. Well, you don't have to have three colours as long as you've got three strands. And then I'm just going to plait these. a case of plaiting them. And then once both sides are plaited you can knot them together. A very three strand flat, but each strand having six in it. Give it a bit of substance. Now you're going to. The length of this is entirely up to you. Um, I think this is about 25 centimetres long. to a point where I think that's not too bad. I think I'll stop there. I'll stop. What I can do is wrap it around a pin so it doesn't come undone, pin it to my board and then plait the other side. <laughs> 